everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 5 of Spyro, Year of the Dragon, part of the Reignited Trilogy. So in this episode, we need to get our buddy Sergeant Bird unlocked, so let's talk to Moneybags. Ah, my good friend Spyro. The sorceress caught this naughty bird letting off rockets in her fireworks factory, but I'm willing to release him into your custody, provided you pay his outstanding fines. Oh, 700 gems, man. I'll be at 1,500. Gonna break the bank. Ha <laughs> ha! What a sucker! Uh, that is, it's a far, far better thing you do today, Spyro, uh, than you have ever done. And, uh, well, so forth, etc. You get the idea. Sure. Sergeant Bird, 90068. Awaiting orders, sir. Um, I think you'll have to find your commanding officer for that. Hey, what are those things? These are the latest military hardware. DBX-9 rocket launchers, state-of-the-art. So why didn't you use them to escape? Because, because I have limited ammo, and I wanted to conserve it for this. <laughs> Say, where'd you come from? I thought dragons had all been dead for a thousand years or something. Well, the rumors of our extinction were slightly exaggerated. We just wanted a little peace and quiet. Well, if it's peace and quiet you want, you should stay clear of my homeworld for a bit. I reckon I'll be blowing up Rhinox for weeks. Cheerio! I just realized his belt clips into his feet. Anyways, we have Sergeant Bird's base. And then after this, we have to go and backtrack to Molten Crater and to... The Sparks level. I have to train the hummingbirds. They must be in peak physical condition if we're going to take on the sorceress. They act like they take on the sorceress, but they really don't. Also, Sparks, pick up the gems, man. Now, this is when the game gets interesting, because now there's 500 gems. Also, there is a skill point here. Bomb the gophers. Yep, we have to bomb the gophers. And I do plan to get all the skill points here. Because the skill points in this game are definitely a lot better than they are in Spyro 2. I still think Spyro 2 has, like, the worst skill points. Because getting, like, flawless on those bosses is a lot more difficult than even this game. If this game had ones where you don't want to take damage from bosses, it wouldn't have been so bad. But no, that's not part of this game. Also, the enemies here are kind of weird. Like, you have, like, enemies that throw flower pots and have nets and... Oh, there's an enemy right behind us. I don't really feel like, uh, you know, I'm dealing with that. Also, we have a homing attack, which is kind of interesting for a Spyro game, considering nothing ever homes in. Yeah, so the gophers are in those little holes, and you have to fly above them to, you know, trigger them to come out. But we don't have the bombs yet, so nothing we can really do with them yet. Thank you, I blew open this door. Alrighty, let me up. I've captured the enemy rations. They won't march far on empty stomachs. Siegfried. Uh, I don't think they're gonna eat the uh, dragon eggs. Sir, the yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is an easy thing. You just fly above them with the A button, and then you press the X button to drop it. You'd probably figure it out really easily on your own anyway. Also, those gophers have, like, little hats. They didn't have hats in the original, so that's kind of a cool little touch they did. Wait, why did that home in on the enemy way down there? It did it again, it's homing in on the enemy down below. Which is not something that you think a game would do. Thank you for the gems. Yeah, I'll start noticing in levels that there may not be more gems in a level. There's just gonna be bigger gems in a level. So instead of a lot of like green and red gems, you're gonna start seeing a lot more like blues and, and golds and purples. Stuff like that, you know? In the original game too, you could actually kinda cheese the uh the, the gophers and shoot them. But in this game you can't really shoot them. Oh yeah, these guys have uh plungers. They shoot blow dart plungers at you for some silly reason. <laughs> Kind of an odd weapon choice, but whatever works to get the job done, I guess. Oh. There's one of these little 
Pixie Rhinox. Did, did the sorceress give you wings or something? Because it's kind of weird they have wings. Just saying, like, they, they look like natural wings, just so out of place. Wait. Wait, did the hummingbird fly through? Because I'm pretty sure she's not supposed to fly through until all the enemies are dead. Yeah, she did. But for some reason, that specific enemy just didn't count towards the the enemies in this room, I guess. One thing you'll notice about a lot of the Sergeant Bird and the final Animal Buddy levels are that there are a lot of gems just kind of like above the area. There's the bombs. So now, before doing this next section, I recommend just going back and doing this. So, we'll do this. And we killed him. I don't know if we technically have enough, though, to do all of these areas. No, we don't. So we're going to need to get more bombs. <clears throat> because there's at least one more gopher and then that crystal vase that we have to break. So just like the, um, the weights that we were carrying, you have to press X to drop them. It's it's nothing new, nothing fancy. No new gameplay gimmick or mechanic. Also, why are the bombs so dark? The lighting makes them really weird. I guess technically can also hold the... Uh, um, oh, there's the last one over this way. Yeah, we would have been short one bomb. And then we can just drop them. I don't think they can hurt you. But I, I'm not going to take the risk. Now we can go down this hole. Which looks like Molten Crater down here. I wonder if that's like a, a hint to like the fact that you have to go back to Molten Crater. I don't know. Probably not. But this is worth one of the last three hummingbirds. Yeah, it's like kind of like the the egg that isn't mandatory. Like if you want 100%, yeah, but it, it's not mandatory to get. It, it's most of these levels. You can kind of skip some of the eggs, but this game, or this level, you know, you get two of them kind of force-fed to you. Oh, excuse me. Now let's uh, continue on here. Do this crystal cavern, and now let's go and kill some Rhinox. Riptox? Rhinox. Rhinox. Riptox are the, from the other Spiral games. I forgot that it was also recording the, uh, the Spiral Game Boy game. I gotta start recording the Game Boy games again. I have so many projects on the go that it's ridiculous. Don't worry, I'm gonna finish them all eventually. I'm just kind of at a... At a point where... I kind of have too many projects going. You guys did vote for Spongebob, though. And since a lot of you did vote for Spongebob, I just, you know, had to continue it. Mission accomplished. It's great to have you back, sir. Thank you, and we got Ryan Lee. I don't know any Ryan Lees, so, okay. There's a hair in my babe. That's weird. Anyways, um, did we kill that gopher back here? No, we didn't, because the game... Wait, no, the other gopher was right here. Also, your hole is kind of, like, greened in there for whatever reason. Anyways, let's kill this gopher next. And then we can blow up this for all the cash and monies. That's a lot of money. Sadly, you only get 500 gems, though, and you paid money back 700. We almost have all our gems back, though. Like, looking at the totals there, we almost have them all, so we'll go and blow this up. We still need, uh, what's it called? More bombs for the gophers, though, because there's at least one gopher around here somewhere. Ooh, a free one up. I see you up there, you freak of nature. Uh, yeah, these... Remember how I said about the balloons? Yeah, you're gonna have to really look up above these levels. Oh, okay, so kill the enemy instead of the balloon. Do these not home in on balloons? I guess they do, just... It's a really weird... interaction. Oh, I thought that was gonna kill the enemy, but... I think it homed in on a basket. I also have a bunch of Nintendo games that I plan to do, like, um... Donkey... Not, not like on, um, the Super Nintendo or anything, but like... Donkey Kong, Tropical Freeze, we got, uh, Yoshi's... 
Crafted World, I think is the game's name. We got a bunch of cool projects like that that we're gonna start up soon. But well, we gotta finish all these pre-existing projects first, so... Just snipe that guy, thank you. Okay, and we have more lava, but I did see that gopher. What the heck is that sound effect I keep hearing there? Shoot! Sounds like Looney Tunes going on in the background. Oh, it's these guys. Is that the last one? That's still not the last one. Where's the last one then? Oh, it's right here. This has got to be the last one. Oop. Missed. And there we go. Whoa, what was with the frame drops there? Did you see that? I got close to the portal and the frames just, like, plummeted. I've never had that on the Xbox before. I don't think we're missing anything anywhere else in here. I think we're just missing this little hallway down here. Watch out for the... Ow, I thought I was, um... Okay, I'm just being stupid now. I thought I was, uh... Out of range of that, but... Oh, and we can get our egg. Before I was captured, I recovered this egg from the enemy, sir. We got Roy from Fire Emblem. We already have 42 eggs, and we're only in the second world of the game, and there's four worlds. The next world, honestly, has probably my least favorite level. Simply because it's just an obnoxious level. Alright, so we still have some kind of gem over here. Let me go and grab this uh, fodder, though. Yeah, Sergeant Bird only has one attack, so dealing with stuff like that is a pain. Also, oh, it's right here. That's not the last gem, though. Oh, wait a minute, that looks like a balloon. Never mind, it's this green gem right here. And there we go, level complete. So now we can go back into the portal and get our 500 gems added to our total. Two thousand ninety-one. Not too bad. We'll be back at twenty-two hundred after we do Molten Crater. So what we can do is because this game does this sixty-nine percent. That's funny. We can just travel. This game just has the auto travel feature, which is one that you were supposed to unlock with the Sparks levels. But for some reason in this game, they didn't keep that. They kind of remove the whole. Hey, guess what? You unlock abilities, but we'll give them. We'll give half of them to you anyway. <laughs> half of them to. Yeah, I get it. Let's go in here. And there's no cutscene for this one for whatever reason. They removed the cutscene. Not entirely sure why. There's just straight up none. There never has been in the uh, the reunited trilogy, despite there actually being one in the original game. So, we can grab an egg in here. Luna from Paladins. You know, the fox. Right. Cheerio, mate. Let's go. Uh, I guess we just want to figure out which way we... I was dumb and hit that. Don't go for the birds. The birds respawn game. I love when the game tries to go for respawning enemies instead of the balloon. Right, so, what you want to do with these heads is, you know that center platform with the, the tiki dude? Like, right here? You just want to set them down here. That's all you have to do. I'm pretty sure we can walk underneath this flame. We almost have all the gems, too. There's only 29 left. Does this room have... Oh, this room does have more than one pathway. Interesting. Ah, I see what we did here. We're just going to drop this head for a second. So we can go and grab these whole two gems. Yay. That's so useful. Drop that down there. Oh, we can go in here now. Oh, is this the double... No, I thought this was the double pathway one. I guess not. Wow, the lack of gems in here is getting kind of disturbing. 
Now, where are the rest of these tiki heads? Wait, is that a balloon? That is a balloon. Oh, wait, there we go. We can go over there. Hey, I doubt there's going to be 18 gems in this one little area, but... Also, if you drop a tiki head in the lava, it will respawn, generally where you originally picked it up. Wait a minute, that is all the gems. Sweet. I didn't feel like it would be all the gems, but it was. Now, is that all the heads? Wait, did that one not count? Can you stop picking up the same one? There we go, and then they'll start dancing when you get the skill point. So easy peasy, a lemon squeezy. Apparently these guys deactivate when they're headless. Kind of a weird functionality for these guys. They go dormant. Also these birds like to go out of sync a lot, which if they go out of sync like that, it makes them super easy to deal with. And then we got this guy over here. Let's grab some health before we continue on. And drop off this last one. Boom. Wait, are you not gonna... Do we have to talk to you? I'm playing a game of hide and seek with my friends. If I can't find where they've hidden their heads, they won't let me join the Tiki Lodge. Help me put them back together and I'll make you an honorary member. Take this egg as a sign of your honorary membership to the Lodge. I'm pretty sure this is somehow broken. And we got Ryan. There's lots of famous Ryans, so that's nothing special. And... Well, that's never happened before. I hope it's not a bad omen. Sure. And now we have to go back to Sunrise Spring because there is a bonus level here that we can do, so let's go. Which, the bonus levels only have 200 gems and one egg, but they are needed to get 100%. Meaning that this game definitely has a lot more levels than, um, Spyro 2. I think Spyro 1 has the most levels despite being the shortest game. And then Spyro 2... Spyro 3 is the longest. The games did progressively get longer. I do love the portal for Molten Crater in the remake, though. It does look really cool. See, now Zoe will be over here. Spyro! I found an egg! But only Sparks will be able to reach it. There's a small hole that leads to a crawdad farm. I can take him there if he's ready. Alright, to the crawdad farm. I miss the old loading screens that Spyro 3 had. Actually, I miss all the old loading Hello, screens. Sparks. Before you take on those nasty crawdads, I should give you some help. To start, let's practice shooting. Press the attack button to shoot these targets. Press the attack button. Okay. Pew, 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 pew. Nice. You can also move quickly by pressing the charge button, like Spyro. Use your charge to chase down this fast enemy. Can call him a beetle? Dead. Now for the hard part. Being a maneuverable dragonfly, you can also strafe in any direction. To strafe, hold down the roll left or roll right button, then move with the left stick. Try strafing to hit the targets in this room. They weren't called the roll button in the original game, by the way, because there was no roll button. Yeah, and you can just do this. This is what you're going to be doing for a majority of the game. On your travels, you'll notice butterflies that give you health, just like in the dragon world. Not only that, but some butterflies will give you special powers, though only for a short time. Just eat any power-up butterfly, then press the jump button to use that power-up. Your power-up is shown in the top right of the screen. It says only for a brief time. There's only one power-up that's actually timed. The rest of the power-ups are ammo-based, so you have 300 ammo. I don't know why they do that. And then they just give you 300. And if you don't use your power-up to kill these enemies, you technically fail. And that's the tutorial. Looks like you're ready, Sparks. If you need any more guidance, just choose the controls option from the pause menu. Thanks. So yeah, now we have Crawdad Farm, which has cake sparks to the farm, one egg and 200 gems, and no skill points. So we'll be at 2,400 gems, so it's really easy to track how many gems we're going to have here. Oh look, 25 already. Just like that. 
Why would we need health, like, in the first 30 seconds of the level? Not even 30 seconds, like, 10 seconds into the level. And you don't, you won't even use your power-ups half the time, except to deal with bosses, just because, really, there's no reason to. Oh look, a red key and a different power-up, but I don't think I need that power-up. So we need to find a door that's red, because that's the door we can open. So we can't open that one yet, but we can, however, open this one. So we can open this door and go in here and collect a bunch of red gems, apparently. These, um, crawdad traps will actually spawn crawdads, so you might want to kill them with it. Or kill them with it. Kill them so they stop spawning. And we already have a green key. So, green keys this way. Okay, these crabs take more than one hit to kill. Super easy to deal with, though. I think this is the shield power-up. Yes, it is. So with the shield power-up, you can kind of just cheese the level a bit for the time being and just run through anything. Oops, did not mean to pick up the, the rocket launchers. Or the missiles or the rockets or the whatever you want to call them. So you can just do this. Still takes just as many hits to kill enemies as it naturally would, you know, with your weapon, but you can technically charge into them while you have the shield. And so it's just a way of getting free damage, essentially. I really do like these sparks levels, I don't... What the heck? <laughs> I angled myself really weird there for a little bit. Now, looks like we should have all the gems done here. We'll have to go double check that corner. I kind of want a different power-up. Like, this one that we have isn't bad, but the one that they technically had in the tutorial is the better one outside of the shield, because it's just the most useful for boss battles. Oh, is this the crab spawner? So we're going to want to angle ourselves to deal with the Mr. Crab's army that's going to be coming out of there. I don't know why they have the same spawner for the crabs, but sure. And Ah, oh, no, we don't get a different power-up. Yeah, there's a boss per... Per sparks level, and without the other power up, we kind of don't have a lot going for us. Oh, yeah, and also, if you use a power up, it'll stop shooting automatically, which is annoying. Wait, wait, is that missile homing in on me? And there we go, he's dead. We got Nora. I don't know any famous Noras, but thank you. And then the rest of the gems are obviously just around here. I do believe we do get a power-up, though, or, like, a new ability for beating this. And then you don't get another one until the end of the game. But there we go, we got 100%. Rightio. The lag, though. Nice work, Sparks. You've beaten the Crawdad King and found the lost egg. Not only that, but some of the dragon magic seems to have rubbed off on you. Now you can pick up gems when they're even further away from Spyro. Which doesn't work half the time. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, join the Discord and Patreon in the links below. In the next episode, we'll be digging on some of the levels found in Midday Gardens. Bye bye guys and have a wonderful time.